tree planting machines and robots are smarter and more advanced than ever. But how smart are they? And can they help us restore nature at a faster rate than we destroy it? Today, we'll take a look at the current state of tree planting robots, what should be considered when designing them, when a robot is preferable to humans, and what to expect from tree planting robots in the future. Welcome to Symbiosis, presenting real-life stories and steps for you to take towards achieving harmony between humans, nature, and technology. Living in this modern age, it seems there's nothing technology doesn't fix or do. Every day, we push the limits of food production, communication technologies, and space exploration. But tree planting robots? Is that even a thing? You bet. In fact, they may be our best shot at supporting our ecosystems at scale. Even though we still don't trust many things in the hands of robots, there are plenty of natural problems that we may still need their help with. Tree planting robots could be exactly what we need to help bring back our forests at a faster rate than we dreadingly cut them down. People like this are paving the way in the environmental world, introducing technology as our saving grace. This is sparking innovation worldwide, and it's clear to see why. Let's take an up-close look at some robots that just may come to our rescue in an attempt to save the Earth. From small-scale projects to something bigger than we thought possible, robots are pushing us to attempt things we once thought impossible. Starting with small robots like this Arduino robot, we can see already how innovators and game-changers are attempting to fix humanity's biggest threat. Niko Dembartnik, a Polish content creator, made this tree-planting robot based on Arduino technology. He created the project out of a love for the environment, and while the robot may be small, it gets the job done. Well enough for Bartnik to quote it with DIY Forest. The robot grabs saplings with a claw and plants them in previously dug holes. This creation leaves a lot to the imagination. If this project was open sourced, what would creative souls build on top of it? With projects like this, it's clear that, as a society, we have the means and creativity necessary to create something to help our environment. And this is exactly what people did. Here's a crazily ambitious project which has fueled the development of tree planting drones. Enter hashtag Team Trees. Ever heard of this movement? What about another name that you almost definitely have heard of before? Mr. Beast. That's right, back in 2019, popular YouTube personalities Mr. Beast and Mark Rober created the fundraiser, and before the year had even ended, they'd raised their goal of $20 million for 20 million trees. But how do you even plant 20 million trees? That might be possible if every person in Sweden planted about two trees each, but we bet not even Greta Thunberg could make that happen. So how did they achieve this? Just like, well, nature. Enter biomimicry. Mimicking nature. Drone seed mimics nature's process of birds eating seeds, flying off, and pooping all over nature. So first, a drone surveys the site and creates a flight plan. Then, drones drop pucks with multiple seeds in them. In the puck is also a smelly agent which ensures that other animals won't eat the seeds which have just been dropped. Ah, the Team Trees fundraiser continues to this day, with people all over the world actively donating to their website. But before we get into other robots and projects, we really have to think about what makes a good or bad reforestation project. What should be considered to not mess up nature? And under what circumstances is it better to use a robot versus humans to plant trees? Considering factors. When thinking up ideas to help fight climate change, there are a few things that you need to keep in mind, especially when it comes to tree planting robots. You need to make sure everything will go as planned. We don't want a robot that's more hassle than it's worth. Here are a few factors to consider. First of all, accuracy. The robot needs to be able to plant the trees properly with little to no error. The efforts will be for nothing if it can't properly bury seeds or saplings. It's useless if it doesn't get the job done well. Secondly, cost. The robot can't be too expensive to manufacture or use because this will make it less accessible and scalable. Then there's durability. It needs to be able to withstand harsh conditions and be strong enough to navigate different terrains on its own. 
the robot will be useless if it can't make its way on its own. We need to ensure the robot won't break under pressure. Then there's efficiency. The robot needs to be able to get the job done properly and effectively. The goal of robots planting trees is to have them be faster than a human could be. If it isn't faster than actually planting the trees ourselves, then it's not really worth it. And of course, there's environmental impact. Obviously, the robot shouldn't have any harsh environmental impacts. We want a functional, eco-friendly robot, no cutting corners on this one. This is highly important. And last but not least, safety. The robot should be safe to use and access. There should be no risk factor when putting the robot to use. We don't want to cause any danger to animals, humans, or the environment. Okay, so now we know what it takes to build a robot, but under what circumstances is it better to use a robot versus using humans for planting trees? There are a few things that can make robots easier and more efficient than humans overall, but especially in terms of tree planting. They include speed. A robot can be so much faster than a human. When you factor in the physical toll the labor of planting a tree takes on a human body and the efficiency of a robot, it's no competition. Which brings us to efficiency. Robots are working on a series of commands and are run by a script. If perfected, their efficiency and accuracy could be way better when tree planting. Then there's cost. Human workers must be financially compensated for their work. Robots don't. Think of how much more work we can get done for a lower cost using robots. And finally, environmental impact. Since robots are manufactured, their environmental impact can be measured and reduced. It's not quite so easy to lower the environmental cost of the humans working to plant the same number of trees. With that being said, there are some jobs that humans might always be better at than robots, and sometimes human labor is just more efficient. Sorry, T-800. I'll be back. It's important to remember this when assessing whether a robot is the most suitable option. Humans aren't disposable or manufactured like robots, but they do have plenty of advantages. We need to figure out how to combine humans with robots to maximize the number of trees planted. That's the sweet spot we're aiming for. Mechanical options on the ground. Now that we've got our ideal robot characteristics in mind, let's take a look at some of the robot options that may, just may, be able to plant trees exactly how we want them to. Starting with a robot that has big, big plans. Forestbot. The Brazilian robot was created in hopes of planting more trees than the number that are cut down and burned each year. That means they aim to plant 10 million hectares per year. This mission may be exactly what we need to save the world. But does the robot work? Yeah, it does. Forestbot V9R3 digs and plants the trees by itself successfully. As it rolls across the terrain, it creates holes in the ground to plant the saplings it holds. Without ever stopping, it plants the saplings after it digs up the dirt. This robot could be perfect for large plains that now otherwise are deserted and left without much life. Milram Robotics Robot Created by Estonian company Milram Robotics, who got their start building autonomous tanks, this autonomous robot forester can plant up to a hectare of forest in no more than six hours. It holds up to 300 saplings and is primarily designed for commercial forests. Nevertheless, this could, with a big emphasis on could, be a powerful tool in the fight against climate change. Large-scale drone projects. Moving on, let's look at some larger scale projects that can scale up our reforestation efforts at an incredible pace and might be exactly what we need to re-green our Earth. When it comes to large scale reforestation projects, there are three prominent players in the drone industry, Airseed, Droneseed, and Flash Forest. The three companies operate in Australia, United States, and Canada, and have developed their own unique seed and sapling delivery techniques. With ambitious goals, Airseed has taken on the quest to plant 100 million trees by 2024. Flash Forest aims to plant 1 billion trees in 8 years, and Drone Seed aims to plant more trees than those that get destroyed every year to help with the carbon-related issues we face environmentally. 
The similarities of these drones are numerous, as they have artificial intelligence to scan the ground for planting locations, and drop, shoot or delivery systems to plant the seed and saplings into the soil. The drones drop the right kind of sapling based on the environment and what's already planted, and it also protects the seed from any potential threat. From small DIY to large-scale drone swarms, it's amazing what we've built this far. But all these robots, drones, and projects just make us want to ask one question. What's next? What does the future hold? If these projects, including drones and tree planting robots, are our current, present day attempts to help the environment, then what's in store for our future? What kind of technology can we come up with as we become more understanding of our needs? There are good ideas out there, like this one for example. This robot would be able to walk on its own, allowing for flexibility when the terrain gets rough and unpredictable. Or these forest ranger druids ideas could make foresting and reforestation even easier, with robots who do it all themselves, requiring no help from humans. With better sensors, they might be able to better analyse and care for the forest than humans can. There are tons of ideas like this and more out there. What about humanoid robots? Similar to the druids, what if we made human-like robots that could simply go through the same process as a human, but without getting tired? The Atlas robot tests this out in a way. This robot stands on two legs and was tested to ensure that it could endure different terrains and obstacles. Just see the progress that's been made in seven years. Talk about closing the gap between imagination and reality. Another idea coming from Japan is that of using Boston Dynamics Spot. This is a four-legged robot that could walk through the forest and maybe in the future plant trees on its own. These ideas are all great evidence that humans are excited to innovate for the sake of our planet, and most importantly, it shows us how possible it is to help repair our Earth using technology. But are robots the right and only way to go about restoring nature? The people in this next video took the reforestation matter into their own hands and changed the world. Click to find out how.